Alexander. Thank you. Uh, I like you're on now. Yep, we're on. We're on live. Uh, thank you. For, thank you, uh, everyone, for waiting. We had some uh, technical difficulties, but now we are live at WLMU Radio with your hosts, Alexander Shepard and David Palmer and Matt St. Martin. And today we have a very special guest on the show. We have the presidential nominee for the Socialist uh, Party of America. Uh, he has graciously agreed to come on and uh, give an interview about uh, his platform, and uh, we hope you stay tuned uh, to listen to him. And uh, after following which, we will have a discussion uh, re- regarding uh, regarding our gracious uh, guest. Now, Mr. Alexander, can you start out by uh, talking a little well, bit about your platform? Well, first I'd like to correct you. We're actually the so- Socialist Party USA, and uh, the Socialist Party USA there is the Socialist Party of America, so it is the Socialist Party USA. Uh, just getting with, uh, uh, just mentioning mentioning a little bit about the platform for the Socialist Party. Uh, we are a workers' uh, party that supports the needs of working class people. Uh, we believe the, working, the needs of working class people need to be addressed on all levels, uh, in the workplace, uh, in education, uh, to make sure that we don't have that disparity in, in income between the rich and the poor. Uh, the Socialist Party USA also, we're very concerned with uh, our uh, expanding role of uh, military uh, dominance in world affairs. We believe that we need to uh, 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 cut the, the amount of funds that we are using to fund a uh, global military uh, a military complex and be able to bring our troops home and also to uh, reduce our uh, 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 interference in other world governments and world affairs. Uh, the Socialist Party also, we believe that uh, workers uh, should have uh, the right to uh, co- to control the means of production and also distribution in society. We believe that they should be able to have uh, 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 work sites where they can be able to uh, control uh, what is being produced in those work sites, the production, and also where they can be able to benefit from co- cooperatives. So uh, the Socialist Party, we are very, as I mentioned, very supportive of workers' rights. Uh, we believe that at the present time we have uh, a nation where it is only to the benefit of big corporations and also that support that uh, they have received from Washington, D.C., even by owning uh, the two corporate parties, which are the Democrats and the Republicans. So, uh Stuart Alexander, um, what is I know in the past so- socialism has had a lot of been viewed with a lot of negative connotations. Do you think that a lot of those still remain? And uh, in what ways has the Socialist Party of the United States and yourself tried to uh, improve the image and people's connotations that they have when they think of socialism? Well, most of the, most of the time when I see people when they refer to the social, Socialist Party USA, they like what we we're saying. They like the things that we represent. Most of the time, the main problem problem they have is just with the word. And they say, "Well, could we just could you just stop calling yourself a uh, socialist party and give yourself another name?" But that's what we are. We believe in socialism. We believe that socialism is the answer for working class people. And we just believe that really, that when you look at what is not working for working people. That's capitalism. We see that capitalism has been a complete failure, a complete failure in the U.S. And uh, many of the things that we can associate with socialism, and I might mention where socialism works the best, it works right here in the U.S. Uh, We believe in socialism and we utilize uh, socialist principles by having uh, public education, by having a fire department that we can depend on uh, when we need uh, that emergency taken care of, uh, a police department, all of these are things that are under a, 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 a socialist type system. Medicare and Medicaid, that's socialism. So uh, our public streets, when we build uh, interstate highways, that's a form of socialism right there. That is socialism. So people utilize socialism every day. Uh, many people that are economically depressed and they're receiving uh, uh, food stamps, and they're receiving government assistance. That's socialism right there. Uh, when we build dams and public utilities for our, 
our community, that's socialism as, as well. So primarily the main issue that people have with socialism, I don't believe is what socialism has to offer, it's just the name itself. And it's only because the capitalists over the years, they, have, they are the ones that have given socialism a bad name. Communism, oh, that's a bad thing. And, like, it's the boogeyman. And the same, the same thing with socialism. It's a bad thing because this is con- contrary to our way of life as, uh, as U.S. citizens. So it, it's only because of the lack of understanding of people understanding what socialism is. But what we do understand is what capitalism, what it is all about. Capitalism is only for the super rich. It's for the wealthy. It's for the big corporations. No one can call themselves a capitalist unless they're super rich. We can work for a capitalist system, but capitalism is not for the poor people. Capitalism is only for the people that have control the resources, the 1% that control the resources of this earth. Um, Mr. Alexander, um, you alluded to earlier how the Democratic parties and the Republican parties are bought out by corporate interests. With that being said, um, the Socialist Party of the USA doesn't really get too much airtime. How do you deal with um, not getting as much media coverage as someone like Mitt Romney or some of the other candidates that are running for office? Well, it's, it's very interesting. Well, first, uh, just mentioning what you said, we do not get the airtime. Prior to uh, the election season, if I go back to six, uh, six, seven months ago, I had uh, the various uh, uh, national news media. Uh, they were contacting me every week, every two, two weeks, like for you to appear on our show and speak regarding this. Usually it was something, could you come on our show and, and just speak in regards to socialism, regarding uh, work issues, regarding corporations, just to show where, uh, as a mockery that socialism uh, does not work. Uh, but I receive those calls on a regular basis. Now that we're in the election season, we, we're not having those uh, TV stations contact, uh, contact us on a regular or frequent basis. But, uh, again, the big corporations control their politicians, and they also control the media stations, the news media that they appear on. If you turn on Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, you turn on any of those stations, it's almost 24-7. It's like you, you, you're you watching the campaigning of their candidates. But they're meant, you have, between all of the parties, you have more than 150 candidates that are running for president of the U.S. But you don't see the minor parties uh, being shown on television or on uh, a national on the national radio stations. So this is a way to make certain that people in the U.S. cannot hear the voice of the other side and understand how the Democrats and the Republicans are not serving their interests. Also to make certain that they can cut out that criticism for the corporate candidates, to cut out the criticism for those candidates, for the Democrats and Republicans that have been bought out by uh, Wall Street. Well, that's, uh, and, uh, that's a good point. Um, uh, on, uh, on a similar note of uh, corporate interest, uh, and when you're talking about the benefits of socialism, I was wondering if you could talk about uh, your solution to uh, the currently private um, control over our monetary supply via the Federal Reserve. Well, as you know, the Federal Reserve was established in 1913, and where it was uh, given over to uh, private control. At, uh, when you look at the, the Federal Reserve today, uh, they, uh, they the control that the U.S. Congress and also the President should be able to exercise over that institution is, is not there. And the powers of the Federal Reserve are far too broad and also has caused far too many problems for for working people in this country. What the Federal Reserve has done, it has been a a tremendous benefit to big corporations, big interests. It has been an interest to governments that favor uh, 